Hey everybody, welcome to Red Zone. Sean and Mike here. This is week three picks for college football, and week one was, or week two, was not that good. Yeah. My Ohio State Buckeyes dropped to Oregon, and you know from there on it was just, you know, it, it was just a bad week. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, looking back at this past week, um, let's see. Where's my pick list? I'll just say that, you know, I said beginning of the year, week one, that I thought it was going to be a crazy year. I wasn't. I didn't want to bet on college football. A lot of it had to do with the name, image, likeness, and how that was going to affect star players. No way of proving how it is or is not affecting them, but there is a lot going on in college football that you just didn't expect to happen yeah. so far. Um, and, you know, Miami has been pathetic, which I predicted they would be. Yeah. And so... Um, and so, I mean, Jacksonville State beating Florida State mm -hmm. on the last play of the game and why the Seminoles were not in a prevent, yeah. I, I don't understand it. Um, Ohio State losing the way they did, um, I don't know. It's just been, it, it's been chaotic. Yeah, I think I got nine or ten. So I'm, I'm kind of trending towards nine or ten good picks. So I was nine and eleven. Just remember that. And if you're new to this channel, we are just fans of college football. We don't yep. use computer analytics or anything like that. We'll dive into the, the teams a little bit to see you know, what we like about them, if yep. something stands out um, as far as these games go. We do look into each game mm -hmm. um, you know, and what the, the, the teams have done previously to that. Other than that, we don't use advanced statistics, nope. anything like that. We just, but, this kind of morphed into this channel but of the us picking. But, but that being said, for the first four years, we were having around 65-70% yeah. right. Yeah. But we did say, and I, I said this beginning of the year, I thought it was going to be a bad year for sports betting for college football because yeah. of the NIL, because of some other changes coming out of a COVID year. And so far, what I was predicting is, is kind of <laughs> happening. So I'm not surprised well, that we're under 50% right yeah, now. Yeah, so after, um, after week three... I will start to, because usually every year I start looking at the uh, against the spread mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and where, where teams are trending. And I'll be very interested to see who's still 3-0 um, yeah. or how many teams. Because once week four rolls around, there's still a good number of teams that are still perfect yeah. on the year. Yeah. I mean, at 20 at least, yeah. you know, and, and that list starts shrinking and shrinking, but... Um, you know, there are still teams throughout the year that, that, you know, week eight, and they're still perfect against the spread. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see come week four who is, a, who is perfect against the spread still because it's, it's just crazy. It's, we, it, <laughs> getting a little bit better of an idea after week two, it's, the thing is, like, they're still playing. You've got Power Five conferences, schools playing these FCS schools, yeah. kind of like o, OU playing Western Carolina. You don't know anything by watching those games. Right. Like you don't learn anything. But if you have, and then you have, and you know, if a power five school struggles with an FCS or an FBS, you're like, oh wow. And then the next week, you're like, oh well, maybe that FBS team's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, um, FCS or FBS. So with two games, it, it getting a little better of a feel. But I still think the jury's out on a lot of these teams on what, yeah. what we're going to yeah. get. Yeah. Texas getting just beat on by wow. Arkansas was, you know, something I knew that Arkansas would play them tough. Mm -hmm. I did not expect what happened. Well, okay, so that's a perfect example because Texas beats Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I thought Louisiana would win. I'm going on what Louisiana was last year and yeah. having a lot of guys return, but they're not even the same football team, Louisiana. Yeah. And after what they did last week, it's like, oh, so Louisiana is terrible. Yeah. Te it's not that Texas is good. It's Louisiana is not very good and at all. And how much so. did COVID affect last year, right. you know, with some of those group of sure. five schools that you look at and think, man, this, this team should have been in the playoffs or this team should have been ranked higher. Yeah. Um, but fans not being at away games for these, you yeah. know, was a big, a huge. Oh, it was huge. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially some of these stadiums that can fit a hundred thousand people in it. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying that uh, Louisiana played in a lot of arenas or, or yeah. stadiums like that last year, but um, uh, comparatively, it, it's I, across the I, board. I think you have to take 2020 and just throw it out. I mean, yeah. if, if it was up to me, I think you erase all the records, all the stats from last year, and last year didn't even happen because you, it's not a gauge on anything for this year. Yeah, it is not. Like we we were talking, we went to the the OU Western Carolina game. Um, 
which was fun, but uh, OU did what they should have done. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were just kind of talking about how, um, you know, there's really two teams right now that you can look at and say they're doing are what they're supposed to do for sure dominant. playoff teams, and that's Alabama and Georgia. Yep, absolutely. Um, they're the only two teams in my mind that, and granted, Alabama, you know, hasn't really been um, pushed all that much. Right. Uh, Georgia played Clemson, beat them, but, you know. We'll we'll know a little bit more about Alabama this week against Florida. But honestly, watching Florida the first two weeks, I'm not impressed at all with them. Yeah. At all. I'm not big on Florida either. So, Um, but anyway, before we get into picks, all that to say, uh, we're just two guys that that just pick these games. We're not professionals in this. You can probably tell. Um, but Mike's got a nice camera, and we got some equipment, it's, so we wanted it's to It's entertaining. Put this together. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't yeah. like listening to what other people think about sure. the yeah. games? I mean, yeah. you know, and we appreciate everybody who watches and comments, and, yeah. you know, it's we're here for fun, and we hope you guys enjoy it. So. I'm going to say some wrong stuff. I'm going to misplace yeah. a team. I'm going to say the wrong and, team. And I'm going to say the wrong player. And I'll be honest with you, and you know <laughs> what I'm going to start doing this week? Um, I, You know, we pick 20 games every week. We're going to leave some out because you can't pick every game. Yeah. But I can't. I don't. I don't. I work full time job. Like I don't sit down and fully research every single game. Yeah. A lot of these I'm going on what I saw, the eye test. Some, but there are a few games in here that I am almost 100 percent confident on. Yeah. And I think I'm going to start mentioning like I'm pretty confident or I'm. I think this is a lock. Just just so you know which games I'm really heavy on, and the yeah. others, you know, it's just kind of like here and there. So. Yeah. So we'll get into the picks in just a second. Make sure, if you have not, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Just mash that subscribe button until yep. it does not pop back up. Mash is a new thing for subscribe. Mash it. <laughs> <laughs> mash it, hit it, whatever you got to do. Mash it, it, grab it. I've heard grab it, smash it. Yeah. Punk Tackle it. it. <laughs> Tackle it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tee off on it. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, right, let's get ready? into picks. Let's yeah. get into week three. First game, Maryland is a seven and a half point favorite at Illinois. Some notes I've got here is, um, well, first of all, Maryland beat West Virginia earlier this year, 30 to 24. They beat Howard 62 to nothing. Illinois is um, only averaging about 3.9 yards per rush. Uh, Brandon Peters is cleared to play. He was cleared to play like basically before the day before the game last week, but he didn't play. I expect him to be back as the starter. I think that makes Illinois a load better on yeah. offense, and I think that's why the spread's not bigger here. I think it's because Illinois probably keeps this closer. Um, I am going to take Maryland. I will say Tagovailoa. He's got he's completed seventy six percent of his uh, throws. He's got six touchdowns, no interceptions. That's huge. No yeah. you know no turnovers. Um, and Maryland running back Fleet Davis. He's averaging seven point six yards per carry. So. Uh, a lot of offensive productivity on the Mar- Maryland's offensive side of the ball. Um, and I, I just think Maryland is able to cover seven and a half, although Illinois plays much better this week than what we've seen the last two weeks with Brandon Peters coming back. Yeah, um, you look at both quarterbacks. Um, if you looked at uh, Satowski for the backup quarterback for Illinois, um, you know, obviously he's going to be the, the leading passer right now because Peters is out. But yeah. um, just – some things that we look at here, even though Sitowski has 611 yards, six touchdowns, one interception, on paper right there it looks like it's as good as Tagovailoa. Yeah. But if you get a little bit deeper into it... Um, well, Illinois played three games and well, Maryland's played two. Yeah, Sitowski so. has thrown 40 more passes, I believe, than yeah. um, Tagovailoa. So he's he's got a completion percentage of fifty three point three, mm-hmm. um, that's that's not good. Yeah, anything at all. below sixty five percent is not good. Or actually, okay, so actually it's fifty two point nine. Fifty three point okay. three was this last game against uh, Virginia. So um, glad Peters is getting back. Um, I don't know how much better because Sitowski looked. You know, when he came in against uh, mm-hmm. Nebraska, he didn't just play so poorly you know he yeah he played okay he played pretty poised and made some really good throws um well illinois defense is pretty bad yeah they they haven't been able to stop you know a wet paper bag i mean it's just they they have not looked good this year yeah so they're one and two um their last two games they lost to virginia they lost to utsa 
um, and then beating Nebraska in that first game. Yeah. I'm going to take Maryland here. I just think that Maryland's a better team. Yeah. I think that uh, Tagovailoa, I think he's a better quarterback. I think he's kind of come out this year. Um, and, and you know, it, it's definitely because last year he was a freshman. Is that correct? Uh, he is a junior this year, I believe. Or he's a red. I know this is his third year, but okay, yeah. so he is a junior because he yeah. transferred. Yes. Um, he transferred last year was his first really big right. year. That's so. Um, in his second year, you can definitely tell he's a lot better. Yeah. Um, so you got Maryland. I, I've got Maryland. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Nebraska at Oklahoma. Oklahoma twenty-two point favorite. I'll just sh- sh- say a brief few things because we won't hang too long because this isn't going to be a game. Oklahoma is going to cover this. Oklahoma will not score less than 50. Uh, Nebraska, good luck uh, scoring 20. Um, I think it, it could be easily be a 30-point win for Oklahoma. Uh, Martinez, he's completing 62% of his completions, four touchdowns, no interceptions. He has been sacked six times, and he's also – this is the, the telling thing about Nebraska – He's also their leading rusher, which means they have no ground game whatsoever. Yeah. So the Sooner defense, say what you want to say about it, whether they're good, whether they're bad, mediocre, decent, I don't care. They're going to tee off on Martinez. They're going to key in on him. Yeah. He's All they got to do is shut him down, and they have enough talent. They have enough speed to do that. I don't think Nebraska has a chance to even keep this close. It's going to be very embarrassing. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, as far as the Nebraska's defense, they gave up 22 to Illinois. They gave up seven to Fordham and three to Buffalo. But Oklahoma's just on another level. And, yeah. you know, I, I know this is a rivalry, and I know you wish it would have been a prime time. <clears throat> it's good to get this one over with at 11 o'clock because it's going to be yeah. a snooze fest by halftime. Yeah, the only thing I worry about, um, I watching that Western Carolina OU game, I don't think all of – I don't think we're just – back to OU being, you know, Mm -hmm. the same defense we were talking about in the last eight games of the year last year. Yeah. Um, They're not quite there yet. Um, Now, they definitely showed, you know, they didn't allow a point in that game. Mm -hmm. Um, At one point uh, in the third quarter, late in the third quarter, uh, Western Carolina still was negative like three or four rushing yards. Yeah. Um, So I don't care who you are, this college football – that's impressive to me that yeah. they just they they shut the run down, didn't allow it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with mobile quarterbacks, um, I mean it's going to be different because yeah. I mean the, off, the defensive line that the OU's got to block or the offensive line that their D line's going against yeah. is going to be much bigger. But this it's is the be... type of defense, speed D that yep. Alex Grinch likes to talk about. Um, he has he has recruited you know, the more athletic defensive linemen that can mm-hmm. get out there, they can move. I mean, Ethan Downs, a true freshman, he chased down, uh, I don't remember if it was a quarterback or a running back. He chased down, it was a running back. Yeah. Um, on We were walking out of the, uh, apologize, but we were yeah. walking out, but um, <laughs> there was a Western Carolina player that, that took off, and, and maybe, I'm, maybe it was a wide receiver, but he kind of stutter steps twice, and Ethan Downs catches up to him, makes, you know, get, yeah. knocks the ball out of his hands, but... He looked quick. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of young guys on this defense. My my only concern is that early in the game, Grinch is doing wholesale changes. You know, like yeah. like he, hockey changes. I don't changes. think he's. I think I he, think that was a Western Carolina. thing. No, because they did it in the first game too. Well, yeah. at at like the on third down, mm-hmm. he just he changed almost everybody out except for the safeties and one corner. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, yeah. that just, I would hope that you get to conference play and he starts kind of trimming his list down on guys that, yeah. I know he wants to be able to rotate a lot of guys in and out. They, they have a three deep for a reason. It's so they can get guys in there and, and fresh bodies. But um, with, a, with a mobile quarterback, you got to be out there and, and start finding tendencies in the offense and what they're doing and, and kind of yeah. get in a rhythm as a defensive player. You know, rhythm isn't just good for quarterbacks. It's good for every single position on the team. Yeah. So um, I worry about that a little bit. Not so much to think that Nebraska is going to scare them at all. but Well, um, I, the, I mean, key, to, the key for OU's defense is the linebackers because yeah. the defensive line is going to be able to collapse the pocket quite yeah. a bit. 
but Martinez can take off. So your linebackers got to stay home. They got to be able to fill that. Brian Osamoa yeah. is one of the fastest players on the defense, and he's at linebacker. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually looks a, like a kind of like a thick corner. I mean, he's a little mm-hmm. shorter. Um, but they've they've gotten some their defensive front seven. They've definitely recruited some guys that are athletic, yeah. speed guys. Um, so hopefully, if they can just manage their mental game, yeah. um, in between the ears is where it's going to be played uh, come Saturday, and yep. hopefully they can do it. I'm picking OU just because I think okay. Nebraska, just as a team, is is not not great. They are not good. I know mm-hmm. that they put a little bit together, but. No, they're um, not good. They're not good. Okay, you got OU. I got OU. All right, next game. Tulsa's at Ohio State. Ohio State is a 26-point favorite. Buckeyes coming off that loss to Oregon. Stroud so far this year, C.J. Stroud's thrown for 778 yards, seven touchdowns, two interceptions. Our offense, Ohio State's offense is averaging 553 yards per game. The reason I bring that up, stats really don't mean that much for me this time of the year because a lot of these teams are playing the Western Carolinas. Yeah. But Ohio State has played Minnesota and Oregon. They're, they haven't played you know, an FBS or so I think those stats are important giving the, the two opponents that they've played. Yeah. Um, the, and Chris Olave is leading the wide receivers, 12 catches, 243 yards, two touchdowns. Um, but Ohio State's defense has gave up 31 points to Minnesota, 35 to Oregon. They're giving up 456 yards per game. You can't do that. There's absolutely no way the Buckeyes are going to win the Big Ten with a defense like that. Yeah. Um, Kerry Combs, is probably, I've told you, probably the best defensive backs coach I've ever seen. I don't think he's a defensive coordinator. Yeah. I mean, the Buckeyes stayed in a basic defense. They weren't blitzing a whole lot. Uh, they just didn't change things up. I mean, past defenses at Ohio State, you got linebackers going, you got safeties and corners coming, you're, you're hitting the quarterback. And we didn't see any of that. And defensive back, I mean, one thing that did hurt Ohio State was Josh Proctor not playing. Yeah. I mean, that really hurt their secondary. But uh, Ohio State defense has got to pick it up. Uh, one one good thing this week, I mean, obviously I'm taking Ohio State to cover the 26. For Tulsa, their quarterback, uh, Davis uh, Bryn, he hasn't thrown a touchdown in two games yet. Yeah, he's thrown two, two interceptions. Two interceptions, no touchdowns. Um, but Tulsa is averaging 5.1 yards per carry. Um, and, and Ohio State has got some holes in their defense when it comes to stopping the run this year. They're just not the typical Buckeye defense that we're used to seeing. So Tulsa may have a little bit of success running the ball. Even as bad as Ohio State secondary is playing, Tulsa's not going to be able to throw the ball. It's yeah. going to be ugly. So um, I, I think the Buckeyes come out. They're home. You know, it's. I think that was Ryan Day's first regular season loss. The Buckeyes are going to come out mad. They're going to want to prove something. Yeah. They're going to score some points. Twenty six. I think that's easy for them to cover this. Yeah. Week. Tulsa got beat by UC Davis in the first uh, game of the year, um, and then they got beat by an Oklahoma State squad that really isn't. Great. Not good. I mean, they're, no. they're not near as good as I thought yeah, they'd be this I'll year. I'll give you some stats on their, them when we get to that game. Their offensive line isn't great, but um, – and then they yeah. struggle with Tulsa. So that's yeah. just – that's insane to me. But They're lucky they won that game. Right. Yeah. But this is at the shoe. Um, I think they're going to want to give their fans a really good win here. Um, it, yep. What's crazy to me is to look at this line. I know it's two games in, but 36.5 points uh, for the offense – and then giving up 33 points per game. Um, now, Tulsa is giving up more points than they're scoring. Um, I don't think it'll be much of a contest. I think yeah. by the fourth quarter, you'll start to see third, fourth walk-ons. Yeah. Tulsa's know, defense might be able to keep it close for the half. You know, Maybe. And when I say close, within 17. Yeah. So, But then I think it just they run away in the second half. Yeah. Okay. Next game, Oklahoma State is at Boise State. Uh, this was a late kick. This is like uh, 9 o'clock Eastern time or something on FS1. Boise State is a 4.5 point favorite playing on that Smurf turf. Some stats here for this one for Oklahoma State. Uh, their defense has gotten seven sacks so far this year, but no interceptions for that defense. Playing the two teams that they played, um, they have not, Missouri State and Tulsa, they have not got an interception yet. Hmm. Uh, their linebacker, Malcolm uh, Rodriguez, 28 tackles so far this year in two games. That's a lot of tackles for mm. one guy. Um, the the quarterbacks, Illingworth and Sanders combined, 56.1% completion percentage, three touchdowns, two interceptions between the two of them. Yeah. That's not good in two games playing those two teams. Yeah. You need to have you know me playing a lot better than that. Um, Oklahoma State's average only averaging 2.7 yards per carry 
against Tulsa and Missouri State. Wow. I mean, they have no run game. And I think that is a testament to how bad their offensive line is playing right now. Um, for Boise State, their quarterback, Hank uh, Bachmeyer, has thrown for 603 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. He has a QBR rating of 76.8, and he's thrown for 14.4 yards per completion. So he is slinging it all over the place. However, Boise State, much like Oklahoma State, pathetic in the run game, only averaging 2.2 yards per carry. So this is probably going to be a throwing game. I don't see a lot of running happening yeah. in this one. Um, but Oklahoma State's got to find themselves if they even want to have a chance. They better have a great week of practice. For me, I have to go with Boise State to cover four and a half. Yeah, these two teams played, um, I think, 2018, but the, the summary is not coming up for me, so I'm not going to yeah. talk about it. Um, plain and simple, Boise State doesn't lose a whole lot on that Smurf turf. That's right. Um, you know, it was a couple, couple of seasons ago that we heard just an insane stat that <laughs> Um, it had been, you know, forever since they'd lost to a certain team on that turf. Yeah. Um, you know, they just don't lose a lot on that field. Um, now you'd think, you know, is Boise State going to be mad that the Big 12 didn't invite them in? Yeah. <laughs> Are they going to want to Well, Boise, to Idaho is a very, very small media market. Yeah. That's why they didn't get invited. Yeah. So. Yeah. So anyway, um, man, this is a tough one. I, I want to go with Boise State, but I, I got to think, is that all for Oklahoma State? Is that all they've got, you know? I mean, I haven't, I have not seen any. I, it bothers me that their, their um, offensive output, their defensive play is so pathetic against those two teams. Yeah. I mean, they haven't, it's not like one of those games was against a Power 5 team. Right. You're this talking about their, Missouri the, State and Tulsa. This will be the toughest competition, so yeah. may, maybe it is a... You know, maybe I'm talking myself I, to be a little bit more confident in, in this pick, but I'll take yeah. Boise State. Okay. Cincinnati is a three-point favorite at Indiana. Um, Desmond Ritter for Cincinnati is throwing for 538 yards, six touchdowns, one interception. Cincinnati is averaging 45 points per game, although one of those was Murray State, so we have to keep that in mind. The other, Miami of Ohio, so not, not huge competition yet. Um, they're averaging six yards per rush, 15.9 yards per completion. Their defense has only given up 10 points per game and has gotten three interceptions so far this year. For uh, Indiana, the combination of Penix and Tuttle at quarterback, 50% completion percentage, three touchdowns, three interceptions. They have been anemic on offense. Uh, and their, de their defense has gotten four sacks, but again, no interceptions for the Indiana defense. Um, it, it, it scares me a little bit that it's only a three-point spread. Yeah. Um, and I do really think this is going to be a really close game. Um, but, you know, I, I think... Indiana's got to be better than what they're showing, but um, I can't. I can't go against Cincinnati right now. Yeah, um, I have to take them to cover the three. Yeah, it, if you know college football, you know Cincinnati was just in, it formally invited into the Big Twelve. Yep. Um, that'll start twenty twenty five, I think. Yeah, twenty twenty six. Twenty twenty five. Okay. Yeah. So twenty twenty five, as well as uh, Houston, BYU, and UCF. don't tell me UCF. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, will this be, you know, this will be Cincinnati's first big test of the season. Um, will they come out fired up and, and yeah. want to show the, the nation that they deserve to, to take that Power 5 they, spot? They need to be a little bit salty, too, because the new AP rankings came out. We had five top 25 teams lose, and you had a bunch of teams jump up. Like, um, Iowa jumped up to, like, set... But Cincinnati stayed eight. They didn't move them up. A bunch of teams jumped them, and it's like if you're Cincinnati, you're like, hey, what's? I mean, probably looking at their their competition, maybe possibly. I but know. I mean, other teams, you know, OU's not played really, yeah. and they're number three. Yeah. So I just think that if you're if I'm on that team for Cincinnati, I'm a little bit ticked off. Yeah. And I'm looking at that, and then the fact that we're going to the big, I think you want to go out there and just knock a Big Ten team in the mouth and yeah. say, hey, quit disrespecting us. Yeah. So I, that's why I, I think. Cincinnati. Okay. Virginia Tech is at West Virginia. West Virginia is a two and a half point favorite. Virginia Tech only giving up 12 points per game. They've got nine sacks so far this year and four interceptions. So the Virginia Tech defense is playing lights out right now. Um, West Virginia lost to Maryland in week 130 to 24. Uh, is it Dogie? Doge? Doge? Their quarterback? Dagie. Dagie. I'm sorry. I apologize. Jared Dagie. Um, 536 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, the combination for West Virginia or West Virginia's running back, uh, Leedy Brown, 32 carries, 
104 yards, four touchdowns. He's averaging 3.3 yards per carry. Not fantastic numbers. Probably some goal line runs in there and everything. Yeah. I haven't watched all their games, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, but all I can tell you is that Virginia Tech defense to me is pretty impressive. Yeah. And I am taking Virginia Tech here with the upset. But I'll definitely take them with the points as far as the pick. But I think there's an upset in Morgantown. Yeah, they're not at home. Um, this will be their first road game. Um, West Virginia gets pretty crazy. And what time is this game? 11 a.m. kickoff? Okay. okay. Yeah. If it, was, if it was at night, man, those, especially yeah. on like a Thursday or a Friday night, yeah. Morgantown gets nuts. I mean, it, oh, yeah. it's... A bunch of drunk rednecks. Crazy. No it's, offense, it's, but that's what it is. It, it's like Ames, you know, yeah. on a Thursday or Friday night. Yeah. 11 a.m., a little bit early for them to start drinking. Yeah. <laughs> a little hungover from Friday night. Yeah. Not ready to start drinking yet in Morgantown, so yeah, um, maybe not as crazy. <laughs> so Daggy's playing okay. Four touchdowns, two yeah. interceptions. Um, you know, they're, they're scoring 45 points a game, giving up 15. Um, passing for 310 yards a game running for 123, so they're a little bit more balanced out um, than Virginia Tech. But Virginia Tech, I got the UNC game wrong on them. I, no, you picked Virginia Tech. That's that right. Game. Yeah, 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 I did. You got it, I, did. I got it wrong. I did because of yeah. that, that crowd. I mean, yeah. that, and then UNC just not having very much coming back. Right. Um, you they had a good warn, game this You tried week. to warn me. But yeah. yeah. Um, but, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take West Virginia. I'll take the home team. It's two and a half points. Um, you know, they always say three, three points, give it to the home team. So okay. uh, I'm going to, I'll stick with West Virginia. Michigan State against Miami. Miami a six and a half point favorite. Listen, they are so lucky to beat App State. Miami should not be in the top 25. They are terrible, in my opinion. Michigan State, surprisingly, has been looking really good this year. Um, I got Michigan State. I don't even need to look at any, anything else. I mean, just watching these two teams play, Michigan State is going to own Miami. Yeah, Derek King has only thrown for 379 yards on the year, one touchdown, two interceptions. Um, Michigan State's quarterback, uh, Peyton Thorne, has thrown for 604, uh, sorry, 465 yards and five touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, completion percentage is pretty good, um, but not throwing the ball a whole lot uh, per game. And then something that kind of sticks out to me is um, their offense has been pretty balanced. I mean, they've thrown uh, for 254 yards a game and ran for 299 yards a game. Um, they're definitely a ground game, um, you know, hit you in the mouth kind of team. Um, but the, the two players that kind of stick out to me are Kenneth Walker, a junior, uh, junior running back for Michigan State, has carried the ball 30 times for 321 yards and five touchdowns so far on the year. That's through two games. Mm -hmm. And then receiving, um, they have a wide receiver. He's a junior. Jaden Reed has caught nine catches for 245 yards and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. That's nine catches for 245 yards. Yeah, yeah. You heard that right. Yeah. Um, that's amazing numbers. Yeah. So I'm going to take Michigan State as well. I think Miami has just, um, man, they have not impressed so go, far. Go back and watch our week one picks and look at what I said when I, we talk about Miami. I said from the get-go, this year, all Derek King's worried about is trying to cash in because he doesn't have a future in the NFL. And I said he's not focused on football and he was going to be terrible this year. So far, I've been absolutely right about that. Now, I can't prove that it's because of NIL making money, but with his obligations, based on what I read and what he's re required to do as far as showing up at nightclubs and things like that, there's no way that guy could be ready to play football. There's yeah. just no way. And, and so far this year, after two games, he has played exactly like I expected him to. Yeah. So this is one of those where you, you, NIL absolutely affects the on-field product and how teams yeah. are playing. And there's probably more. I mean, that, yep. that may be an, uh, a reason why it's been so chaotic I, I believe the it first is. couple of weeks. I believe it is. I, I believe mean, that's what it has, has yeah. to do with. Five ranked teams lost yeah. in week two. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of teams are still playing... Uh, directional mm -hmm. you, you know, yeah. one of okay. those teams with a an east or a west on the end or the yep. beginning of their name. So, all right, next game: Northern Illinois is at Michigan. Michigan is a 27 point favorite. A couple little notes here: Northern Illinois beat Georgia Tech 22 to 20 in Week One, lost to Wyoming 50 to 43 last week. 
Uh, Northern Illinois is averaging 32 points per game and 389 yards per game. So they have an offense. Um, Michigan beat Western Michigan 47-14, and then Washington 31-10. Although Washington losing week one to Montana was, you know, shows that Washington is terrible this year. Michigan, Cade McNamara, he's only thrown for 180 yards in two games, two touchdowns. Wait, who lost to Montana? Washington lost to Montana. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Cade McNamara has only thrown for 180 yards in two games. He has two touchdowns, a QBR of 52.4, and a 46% completion percentage in two games against Western Michigan and Washington. Um, the running back, uh, they have two running backs. Blake Corum, is, he's rushed 35 times for 282 and four touchdowns. That's 8.1 yards per carry. And Hassan Haskins, 40 carries, 225 yards, two touchdowns, 5.6 yards per carry. So clearly, Michigan is just running the ball. Yeah. If they have to throw the ball, they're in trouble. They're not able to throw the ball. Um, Northern Illinois has an offense. They have an offense, I believe, can score on Michigan. I don't think they win the game, but I think 27 is way too high given the fact that Michigan cannot throw the ball and Northern Illinois is actually going to be able to score some points. So I will take Northern Illinois in the points in this one. <laughs> okay. Northern Illinois is giving up 231 yards on the ground per game. Um, they lost to Wyoming 50-43. to uh, They did beat Georgia Tech. 22 to 21, um, which Georgia Tech, not really much. No. Um, but Michigan has beat uh, Western Michigan 47 to 14, and uh, they beat Washington 31 to 10. I think this will be an easier game for them than uh, Western Michigan. Give me Michigan to cover 27. Cover, cover 27. Okay. Yep. Purdue is at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a seven and a half point favorite. Got to be honest with you, before I really started digging into this, I had Notre Dame covering. I since switched my pick. I'm taking Purdue in the points. Uh, Purdue beat Oregon State 30 to 21. They beat UConn 49 to nothing. They're averaging 40 points per game and 500 yards per game. And uh, Notre Dame, of course, beat Florida State 41 38. And they struggle with Toledo, beating them 32 to 29. Florida State now we know is trash. Uh, even though one week ago you had me talking about them and national title round and playoffs. I mean, Yeah, I told that. him, we're sitting forget at the that. OU game. <laughs> Golly. We're sitting at the OU game, and I said, do not dare call Florida State a national championship <laughs> contender this year. Don't yeah. you dare do it. Uh, Notre Dame's defense, they have gotten 10 sacks in two games, which is pretty impressive. Notre Dame's defense? Yeah, yeah. and Jack Cohn has played pretty well for Notre Dame. But I just, I, I don't know, Notre Dame's struggling like they are taking it down to the wire. Man, Purdue is better than either two teams they've played so far. And they've, they've, it's been, went, went down to the wire the last two weeks. The luck is not on the Irish' side. And you know, third time is uh, third time's a charm for their opponents. So I got Purdue, and I really think Purdue pulls an upset here. For Purdue, um, their competition, though, Oregon State and um, UConn are perennially bottom dwellers. I mean, they're just yeah. not... Um, they're usually not very competitive whatsoever. Oregon State kind of flashed a few times within the last couple seasons, I think. Although, let me stop you there. Purdue has a tendency, even when they're unranked and not very good, of knocking off high-ranking teams. In yeah. 2000, the 2002 season, I know that's a long time ago, when Ohio State won the national championship, it game, the game came down to a fourth and one when... Um, High State's quarterback hit uh, Jenkins on uh, fourth and one for a touchdown to win the game. Purdue nearly knocked him off. A couple years ago, remember when Ohio State goes to Purdue and Purdue just ruined Ohio State's season? Yeah. You know, Didn't they just destroy him? Yeah, it was that kid. Remember the kid that had cancer and everybody was, yeah. you know, they did a feature on ESPN. I can't remember his name, but they won that night uh, and, and won handily. Wasn't so, it like 40 something to yeah, it was, not a lot? It wasn't a lot. And it was like, so. I'm telling you, when, when Purdue, I know they're never like contending for the Big Ten and things like that, but Purdue has a tendency to knock off high-ranking teams. And the way Notre Dame's been playing, I, I, I just see Purdue pulling the upset. That's just my opinion. I mean... Mm. I just don't know how good Toledo is to, to you know, hang with North, North, uh, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Um, Notre Dame has some good pieces... I just, I don't know. I can't pick Purdue. I just, for some reason, I just can't. So you got Notre Dame. I just don't think they've okay. been challenged, really, you know. And and obviously, Notre Dame has. They they went into an overtime game with, with Florida State, who turns out isn't isn't 
that great. Maybe they're having some problems, you know, mm -hmm. uh, picking a quarterback. So um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Notre Dame. That's yeah. that's who I originally picked, and I'll, okay. I don't like I don't yeah okay. I, I don't like that Purdue hasn't really played anybody competitive okay. so far. All right, next game Alabama's a 15 and a half point favorite against Florida. I know you Bama fans want to hear stats and hear us talk about the game. There's nothing to talk about here. Alabama rolls. I mean, Florida's not not even in Alabama's league this year. Um, there's some issues down there. F Florida didn't put away South Florida like they should have. Uh, didn't cover the 29 last week. Yeah. They don't have a chance Florida, against Alabama. Florida's got to find something different than Emory Jones. Yep. Um, he's thrown 49 passes connected on 31, which is okay. But 264 yards, two touchdowns, four interceptions. In I two mean, games, that's ugly. In two games. That's... And comparative to Bryce Young, um, throwing 65 passes, connecting on 46, 571 yards and seven touchdowns. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, Alabama played Miami, destroyed them, played Mercer, destroyed them. Um, Florida did take care of business in their first two games as well. But I just think, you know... I just don't know how much Florida has, you know, to be yeah. able to to remain competitive throughout the entire game. I think maybe they stick with them in the first half, but then Alabama just rolls. Yeah, Alabama drains the swamp. Yeah. I mean, basically. Okay, next game, Georgia Tech at Clemson. Clemson, a 29-point favorite. Initially, I wanted to take Georgia Tech in the points. After I looked more closely into Georgia Tech, I'm like, whoa, no way. Clemson probably wins 41 to nothing, 41 to 3. They roll easily, I think, Clemson. And the points. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Clemson. I think that um, you know they they get the win this last week. Um, it was South Carolina State, um, but they're gonna want to they're they're gonna need to at this point since losing to Georgia. They want to get back into that top four. Yeah. You know, so they're gonna have to win and win big every single week. Um, and I just I don't think Georgia Tech is all that good. I mean yeah. they. They they lost to Northern Illinois that first week. So, um, yeah, give me Clemson to, to roll on this one, too. Kent State is at Iowa. Iowa, 22-point favorite. Iowa coming off the big win against Iowa State, the in-state rivalry. Um, look, bottom line is Iowa has, I believe, the second-best defense in the country behind Georgia. I don't think Kent State scores. They might get a field goal. I'm looking at like a 31-3 or 31 nothing win for Iowa. Defense probably gets 14 points. They probably score two more touchdowns. Um, I don't think it's close. Iowa, for me, easily covers 22. Yeah, what time is this game at? Oh, here we go. Kent State, um, they just got beat. Uh, they got beat by Texas A&M, 41-10. Um, and then they won their game this last week, 60-10. to uh, yeah, not a whole lot to say about this one. Iowa has definitely surprised. Um, they did beat Iowa State by 10. That's a rivalry game there. Um, I think it was, wasn't it kind of, you know, the points where, you know, Iowa was up quite a bit, weren't they? Yeah. For a little bit of that game. It was 27 to 10, I believe, at one yeah. point. And then the final was like 27-17. Yeah. So, um... But Iowa shut down Iowa State there at the end when Iowa yeah, State was... Yeah, that defense is just way too good. Yeah. Um, I'm taking Iowa to cover 22. Okay, okay. USC is a nine-point favorite against Washington State. And I like how <laughs> I like how it's it's 22 and not like 30 or something. Because yeah. they, they know that Iowa typically doesn't score, yeah. you know, a ton of points. Right, exactly. I mean, that, defensive that, team. First, that first week where they... Uh, let's see... What'd they do that first week? That they beat Indiana, or uh, they won thirty-one to thirty-four to six. 34 they to beat six. they beat Indiana. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of surprised me. They've now beat two ranked teams in a row. I mean, ranked at, at preseason at the time. Yeah. Um, don't know if if those teams will. I'm all about at the end of the the year counting your ranked wins, seeing who's yes. ranked at the end of the year. I agree. Um, body work definitely matters. So. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to stick with Iowa here. Okay, USC is a nine-point favorite against Washington State. Washington State lost to Utah State week one, 26-23. They beat Portland State 44-24, a lot closer than you'd expect for a Power 5 team playing Portland State. Washington State is giving up 430 yards per game in those two games. Um, USC lost to Stanford last week 42-28. 
Uh, USC's running back is averaging over five yards per carry, and Washington State's running back, Max Bogey, 24 carries, 145 yards, two touchdowns, six yards per carry. So he's able to move the ball a little bit on the ground, but I'll tell you what, giving up 430 yards per game to Utah State and Portland State, that's not good. So USC covers the nine easy. I think they do as well. Um, Keaton Slovis has thrown 78 passes, connected on 51, 479 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Hasn't really played. Um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to bet that they, they wish they still had JT Daniels. Yeah. Um, Cause Slovis, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know if he gets them there, but yeah. I've got them covering Washington state this year, uh, this, this week. Okay. Um, not a whole lot I have to really say about it. Mississippi State is a three-point favorite against Memphis. Uh, I got Mississippi State covering the three. Memphis just isn't what they've been the past few years. They're, they're a little off this year. And um, Mississippi State just throws the ball everywhere. They're not really going to run the ball. They're going to throw it, throw it a lot. Um, and I just I think Mississippi State, they're 2-0, and and they come out with the win here. I'm taking Memphis. Um, their crowd gets pretty rowdy. Um, that was one team I wish that the the Big Twelve would have mm-hmm. offered a you know a spot yeah. to. Um, I would have rather seen Memphis take BYU's spot probably in the Big Twelve. Um, but they beat Arkansas State fifty five fifty, and they beat Nichols forty two to seventeen, where Mississippi State um, beat North Carolina State twenty four to ten. And beat La Tech uh, 35 to 34. Mississippi State has kind of eked by with a couple of wins, and you know Memphis does get a five-point win over Arkansas State, but those are two kind of rival teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take Memphis. It's three points. It's at home for Memphis. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I've got them covering. Okay. South Carolina is at Georgia. Georgia is a 31-point favorite. South Carolina's got the grad assistant turned quarterback that was. Featured last week, everybody was talking about Georgia. To me, has the best defense in the country, um, but their offense is still sputtering a little bit. JT Daniels did he didn't play? That Stetson Bennett played last week, yeah. right? Uh, Daniels is probably back, but Georgia still has some work to do on offense to kind of get things kicked into gear. Um, and, and this is an SEC game, so I, to me, 31's a bit high. I don't like that. Um, so I'm going to take South Carolina in the points. I know Georgia's going to win the game. But I think South Carolina keeps it within 31. Um, I'm taking Georgia. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna take Georgia. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next I don't one. have any notes on them. I'm just gonna okay. take them. Auburn is at Penn State. Penn State is a six and a half point favorite. I kind of thought when it opened the, that Auburn would be the favorite, mm-hmm. and then I'd take Penn State. Penn State six and a half point favorite. I'm not a hundred percent sure about them right now. Yeah. And I think Auburn has played pretty good. Um, so just because Auburn's the underdog and I think it's going to be a really close game, it could be a three point game. I'm going to take Auburn in the points. Yeah. Penn state eked out a win against Wisconsin, 16 to 10, Mm -hmm. um, and then beat ball state 44 to 13 Oregon. Um, they beat Alabama state 62 to nothing and then beat Akron 60 to 10. So not a whole lot of competition there um, for Auburn. So when you look at their stats and see 61 points uh, scoring and giving up only five. They're doing what they're supposed to do against that competition. Yeah, right. That's all you can say about that. And I don't know, I don't know if, uh, sorry, I don't know if Tank Bigsby is, has he been playing? Let me know if you're an Auburn fan. Um, they've got a, uh, I just lost my entire list here. Sorry. Um, they, Tank Bigsby is not their, uh, their leading rusher, um, which kind of surprises me. So um, he did have 112. Okay, so he, he carried the ball 11 times, 122 yards. And then uh, Jarquez Hunter, who's a true freshman, I believe he's their, their leading rusher. Um, I'm trying to get back here, which Tank Bixby was supposed to be the, like, he was projected to be the number one running back in the SEC. I said maybe Isaiah Spiller would be, um, because I thought 
I, I forgot about Tanks Bigsby, um, but their running game looks pretty good. Um, you know, Penn State has uh, Noah Kane, who's who's really good. Um, I think this will end up being a really close game. So um, I'll take Auburn. I just I know it's at Penn State. That's you know Pennsylvania is a pretty far you know pretty far from Auburn. So um, State College is is yeah. a little bit of a, a flight, but what um, time's that game? Do you have it pulled up? Man, am I I exited out of okay. everything That's I had, fine. so I had. I can get to it. That's all right. It's no big deal. 6.30. Okay, so it's game. a primetime game. On ABC. So probably be whiteout. I'm guessing that that's what Penn State usually does. They do a yeah. whiteout game, um, which I think has no effect on anything whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. So we both have Auburn. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm taking Auburn. All right, let's move to on. To keep it close. Penn State may win, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. but I think they keep it close. Okay, Rice is at Texas. Texas a 25-point favorite. Rice just isn't very good. Yeah. I mean, the truth is, um, Texas is at home. This is on the Longhorn Network. Um, I am reluctantly taking Texas to cover 25. Yeah, I'm going to take Texas. Um, you know, Rice is, they, they lost their first two games to Houston and to Arkansas. Um, Arkansas did beat them 38-17. to Houston beat them 44-7. to um, You know, they're scoring 12 points a game, game and giving up 41. Um, now Texas is scoring 29.5 and giving up 29 points. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is in thanks to Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so was that just they weren't ready for the game? They thought that, that Arkansas wasn't going to be as tough a competition? as I, I, think, I think Texas tried everything they could to be ready for that game because it's an SEC game. Yeah. You're going to the SEC. You need to make a statement, yeah. right? And Arkansas made the statement. Arkansas yeah. said, and now the media, fans on social media, everybody is talking about, Texas, what are you going to do when you're in the SEC? Yeah. If you can't beat Arkansas, you, you can't compete. Yeah. That's the, I think the takeaway. You come out, I think you come out and start Casey Thompson. Yes. Um, and, and not to say that Hudson Card should be done forever, but, um, but I think that they should give Casey Thompson. He yep. came in. Through eight passes, connected on five, yep. 51 yards, 7.1 yards per, per attempt, and had a QBR of 98.7. He also rushed the ball uh, seven times for 44 yards and two touchdowns. So I um, think Casey Thompson gives Texas the best opportunity to win. Yeah. Right yeah. now, this year. Yeah. Hudson Card may be the better quarterback when in the long run. In, when he came in last year. Casey Thompson is the man. The, his teammates got pumped. I mean, they yeah, were they, they, they seemed to play a lot better when, when he finally came in the game last year. Yeah. Um, so I say you start him, and if he does well, then, then he's your starter going forward. Yep. If he struggles a little bit, then yeah, maybe yeah. you know kind of test it out a little bit more. But I think you should start Casey Thompson. and. I've got them covering against Rice. Okay, next game, Tulane against Ole Miss. Ole Miss a 14-point favorite. If the Tulane team that played Oklahoma shows up in this game, Tulane put, knocks off Ole Miss. I know Ole Miss is powerful on offense. They're going to score a lot of points with Lane Kiffin as their coach and all this and that, but they don't play good defense, and Tulane has one heck of an offense, in yeah. my opinion. Um, rather they win or lose, they'll keep it within 14. So I got Tulane in this one. Yeah, Matt Corral, um, 65 passes, connected on 43, 662 yards, six touchdowns. So he's right there, um, kind of in the thick of it with some of the better quarterbacks. Um, but Tulane's quarterback, uh, Michael Pratt, um, three touchdowns and 296 yards on 44 passes. So um, not as many passes there. He's their leading rusher. Um with 15 carries for 34 yards. Um, man, they're scoring 53 points a game and giving up 40. Yeah, That's kind of tough. Um, maybe they do the same thing to Oklahoma and they hang around for a little bit, but I got to think that, um, you know, Tulane, they, they beat, what's that, Morgan State, uh, 69 to 20. Um, and Ole Miss really hasn't had that much I mean, Louisiana or uh, sorry, Louisville is probably the best team that they've definitely the best team they've played so far. Um, this is a tough one because 14 points just seems like seems like a lot, you know, for a two lane team that can yeah maybe hang. Although 
Oklahoma did a lot to kind of mentally screw up in that game. So um, was that Tulane being really good, or was that OU just not being mentally prepared? We saw a lot of things in the in in the news, you know, the days after that game that players were untaping, you know, their yeah. their tape in the third quarter because they thought they had that game won. Well, that's all in coaching. And some of the teammates thought, even said later on in interviews said some of these players on OU's team woke up and just thought they were going to roll into the stadium and and yeah. and win. So, um, who you got here? I originally had two lane, but just thinking about how much OU kind of shot themselves in the foot mentally, I'm going to take Ole Miss. Okay. I'll take Ole Miss too. Two games left cover. here. O- Arizona State's a two point favorite at BYU. I, I, I tried to stay up and watch the whole BYU Utah game, and I fell asleep about third midway through the third quarter um, because I was up late Friday night covering high school football. Got home, had to be up at seven to coach T ball and soccer and football, and I was up all day. I just couldn't stay up. Yeah. So um, I couldn't stay up for the whole game. I know BYU won, but I'll tell you what. From what I saw, I like what I saw from BYU. I really do. I know Arizona State's really good this year. I think they're two and zero, but I'm going to go your line of thinking on this one. Home, t- it's within three points. Take yeah. the home team. So I got BYU in this one. Yeah, um, Jaden Daniels. You know he's rushing for a lot, but passing wise, I just don't think he's that great of a passer. Had a lot of Arizona State fans uh, at the beginning of the season on on Twitter and and multiple media mm-hmm. um, formats saying that um, that Daniels was going to that Jaden Daniels was going to run away with the Heisman this year. If he doesn't start learning how to pass the, the football, it doesn't matter how many rushing yards he has this year, he's not winning the Heisman. Yeah. He might not even get an invite to New York um, because the quarterbacks that can run really well can also pass really well. Right. So One-dimensional uh, quarterbacks aren't going to yeah, get it done. I, I just think tomorrow. you got to temper your expectations on that because I do not see him winning. If he keeps going the way he's going, he'll rush for a million yards, but he's... Yeah. You know he's not going to throw for that many. I mean he'll be lucky at this pace to to break two twenty five hundred. You know so um, I'll take BYU as well. I originally picked them mm-hmm. um, home team two points here. I've got BYU. Okay, last game Fresno State is at UCLA. UCLA is a ten point favorite. All I'm going to say is after Oregon beats Ohio State that first week against Fresno State. I think Fresno State is just much better than what I gave them credit for in week one um, or week two. And so um, I still think UCLA wins this game, but I think it's a really close game. I think Fresno State keeps it within 10. So I've got Fresno State in the points. Mm, I'm going to take UCLA. I think they're they're on a good track right now. I mean, um, they, they whipped up on Hawaii. Um, then they go out and beat LSU. Yeah, um, they've been what I what I kind of thought that they were going to be this year. Yeah. A lot better of a team under Chip Kelly. I just think it's a UCLA six or seven point win is why I'm taking Fresno State. So yeah, I I think they're better than that. Okay. But All right. Hey, we'll that's see. our picks for week three. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like that. Uh, like the video and always leave your comments. We read and I try to respond to as many people as possible. Um, and then also, hey, we also have Instagram now, so you can go check us out on Instagram as well. I don't even know if you know we have that. Smash it. I did not know. No, yeah. I know we got Twitter. Yeah, so um, we got anyway. the Twitter. So we'll now post we got some, the Instagram. We'll post some stuff, and then um, contemplate. I'm contemplating doing some NFL picks coming up. I was going to do it this past week, and I held off. I just don't know enough about NFL. Yeah. To, well, I mean, I was going to throw. Doing I was just going games. to do a separate video <laughs> picking like five games that yeah. I felt comfortable with, but. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Still debating that. Yep. Okay. That's all we have. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for week four. Take care.